Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to check out a high-end PRS guitar. That's not something we normally see on this channel. And I'm happy to say that today's episode is sponsored by my Sweetwater sales engineer, Nate Burkhart. You can contact him directly at Sweetwater using this extension. He'll be happy to help you with any of your shopping needs. From guitar strings to really expensive guitars to everything in between, he's your guy. But I ordered this back in July for somebody who wanted to see this on the show before they got it under my new Guitar Day program. Because there's kind of an interesting tie between Gibson history and this particular model by PRS. And if you're curious what that connection is, this is the PRS 594 McCarty model. And if you know anything about Gibson history, Ted McCarty, the guy that this whole thing is named after, was the president of Gibson. He was vice president, I think, for one year in 1949, and then from 1950 until 1966, you know, the golden era of Gibson, you know, when the Les Paul was birthed, when the SG was birthed, the 335, Firebird, all things like that. His name is on the patents for many of those guitars. So when Paul was starting off his company, you know, in the 80s, he was doing a whole bunch of research in this and he kept seeing this guy's name show up, Ted McCarty. So he reached out to him and he kind of just took like a mentorship with him. So he would bounce ideas off of him to create these very nice guitars. And in 1994, they introduced the first McCarty model. So the backstory of the name behind us, let's check out which model we got because you can find single cut McCarty's and you can find double cut. There's also hollow bodied ones. We can have a lot of fun, but this one, I'm kind of actually excited to take a look at this thing because it is the larger hollow bodied version. So I'm not sure if this is the exact model that Tyler Larson of Music Is When uses, but I see, you know, certain YouTubers always using these like hollow bodied PRS guitars. So when the opportunity came up to demonstrate one of these things, it's like, yeah, why not? This is really lightweight. It weighs almost nothing. When they say it is a hollow body, that's definitely a hollow body. It looks like we got some sort of a chamber in here. I can use my endoscope. We can maybe take a look in there to see how they do this stuff. This feels and looks like nothing that I was expecting, you know, from the photos. I thought this would be like a Les Paul Supreme where it'd be like chambered out in certain areas, but this really feels like, you know, one of those old hollow bodied arch top type things. That's interesting. So we've got a complete arched top here. Like I was not expecting it to be that dramatic and the back is also just as large here, but we get the maple cap on the back. We get it on the front and then we get the mahogany sides and they leave the edges, you know, kind of exposed so we can still see like a natural wooden binding. And then as far as the neck goes, you know, it's fairly similar, but this is the hollow body two model. But as I was saying earlier, you can get a McCarty 594 in a single cut version. And you can also get them in the double cut that's not a hollow body. So don't think all McCarty 594s are like this one. This is kind of a special instance. And you might be curious, how does this differ from like a custom 22 and a 594? Please keep in mind, I'm not a PRS expert, but from what I can see is the bodies are a little bit thicker on the 594s and they utilize a more Les Paul-like control layout. So instead of just master volume, master tone with a toggle switch down here, you get your toggle up here. You get the dual volume and tone controls. You get a very familiar setup down here. So mainly being a Gibson fan, I think this should make for an interesting review and demo here. So let's go ahead and throw this on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs before we get to that playing demo. Inside the McCarty, I saw quite a few things that we need to discuss, starting with our pickups. Now, at first in the photos, I didn't think this was any different than a regular humbucker, but take a look at some of these fine details. These pickup rings are much more rounded on the edges, you know, to kind of get out of your way while you're playing. And you'll also notice that the height adjustment springs are slightly recessed in there, so they don't stick up like normal. For example, here's a Gibson version. I mean, they're not sharp pointed corners by any means. They're slightly rounded, but not quite as rounded as these guys. And you see how these screws sit on top of it? These ones actually go down into it. And PRS is known for all these like micro innovations that just make life a little bit better. So that's something that's the first time I've seen it. 
but you can see the model of the pickup right there on the outside. It's the 5815 in the neck, as well as in the bridge. And it also tells you that on the back. I think all the stickers kind of make the back of these pickups look a little bit cheesy. But our pickup cavities are kind of interesting here. So the neck pickup, it's pretty much regular. You get a bunch of barcode stickers over top of it. You can see the truss rod channel in the neck where it joins to the body. And it does have a very long neck tenon right there. But then when you switch over to the bridge pickup, it doesn't actually have a bottom to it. But we can see all these little signatures. And those are the people who worked on this guitar. I know in my last Silver Sky video, I had an employee... Uh, say, hey, you should take some more time to look at that. Some guys like to see where their work ends up. So there's a good shot at all those. But what's kind of cool about this is the top is actually relatively thick. So it's not like an arch top where it's just, you know, a tiny little thin top and then you get a tiny thin back. It actually seems like they start off with a pretty decent sized chunk block right there. Then they must take that, shave it down, and also shave from the outside. I'll show you that with the endoscope. Okay, so right now we're just right underneath the pickups. So we can see where the neck block ends right here. And then you can see the rest of the wood and where the wiring goes on back here. So now we're running in through the F hole. So this is the block for the tailpiece and studs and all that. Then we move on to this other cavity. So right in here is where you're kind of seeing where your strap button goes into place. So they give it some additional wood right there. And on the other side, we're starting to see the electronics, which we can't really uh, read pot codes or anything, but at least we can see them, right? There's our push-pull pots in both locations there. And then over here is the other volume pot. So kind of cool to see the guitar from the inside. But what I really wanted to show you is the F-holes. So you see right here, that's where the pickup cavity is, how it's got a lot of wood surrounding it, but then they actually carve that away in order to form that really thin arched top right there. So it's, you know, pretty interesting how they do this. Shame on them for having glue showing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're not going to get that crazy here. But right here, we're seeing the toggle switch and the rest of the cavities in there. So this is just a complete hollow body with a few posted chambers, I guess you could say. Okay, so just to reiterate, you get like a little block right here of wood, you get a block right here, and then you get a little bit of a bump right there for your strap button to go into. The rest has pretty well been chambered out. So as far as the readings, 8.02 K ohms in the bridge, and our neck a little less hot at 7.28. You can also have the middle position for a 3.81, and you get fancy little coil splits on your tone pots, which will split the coils in half. So 7.46 on the bridge, 4.47 on the neck, and 2.45 in the middle. Our next PRS innovation here actually comes to this. So, you know, it, it's very similar to a Gibson ABR-1 and stop bar tailpiece setup, right? But they actually made some significant changes here. So first off, we get large brass saddles. Brass has always been good for sustain. But the back, it doesn't have any fancy markings or anything. It's just very similar to an ABR-1, except for it's kind of more rectangular in shape and not as rounded off. And if I'm putting it back on correctly, it actually goes the opposite way than an ABR-1 does. They always have the screws facing up here. But the tailpiece is where there's a lot of innovation going on here. So first off, we have these little slots going on in here. And at first I was like, well, what is that for? Is that to help you put the strings on? Yes and no. But before we continue on with that story, take a look at this. It's, there, there's no way to take this off. You actually lock this puppy down using these brass screws. So it's a familiar setup, but not done in a familiar way, because normally a Gibson tailpiece, you can just, you know, slide it off when there's no strings on it. And there's a few different reasons why they would probably make this change. A, when you're changing strings, you don't have to worry about this thing falling off and dinging your top or losing it or whatnot. Most people want these tailpieces decked down anyways, or at least enough that they're not collapsing their bridge. But you no longer have to worry about the ball ends of the strings going ding, ding, ding against your finish. Because check this out, I still have the strings attached to the headstock, but in order to put it in, you just gotta put it down like that and then slide it over and tune it up to pitch. So you're no longer pulling the string through the tailpiece. It's just kind of a, a quicker way to do string changes, add in locking tuners and it's very quick to do. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Never realized what that design exactly was. I just thought it always looked weird. But lo and behold, there is function to the form. Three-way toggle switch located up here. Kind of noisy, if that would be one thing I could complain about. 
And PRS always has these like frictionless knobs. I would say the push pull pots actually feel and sound better to me. Like you hear this versus this. But they are push pull. So you just pull up on them and you push down when you're done, not push push. The knobs themselves are pretty cool too. A dark like molasses color and then a little bit of golden brown. I guess whiskey bottle you can maybe think of about that. But check out that carved top. It really has a belly to it. So two piece maple top, you get mahogany sides and then we'll see the maple on the back again. But the neck itself is just made of mahogany and we have a rosewood fretboard which I conditioned. You get your bird inlays and it's 22 medium jumbo frets with a bone nut, so very standard specs there. I measure a 1.68 inch nut width which increases to 2.07 by the 12th with a first fret neck depth of 0.91 and that increases to 0.99 by the 12th. They call this the pattern vintage neck. I'm not really familiar with PRS terms, so I don't know what that means. To me, it feels like a, a rounded C-shaped neck profile. But moving on to the headstock, it looks like we have some sort of a rosewood veneer over the top, and that's done up in a satin finish. And underneath our truss rod cavity here, we have a 1018. I'm not sure if that's the model identificator or what. I'm not familiar with that. But you don't see that when you have the metal truss rod cover on it. And of course, you have the locking tuners up here. You unlock them by twisting this off and then you pull your string out or put it in then twist it back on to lock them into place. And the whole PRS headstock does have straight string pull so in theory tuning stability should be very stable on this guitar. Now all strung back up I'm sure some people will be curious you know how does it sound acoustically? It's pretty loud, I would say. I think you could definitely sit down with this and just play it like a semi-acoustic, you know, just for your children or something. But I've got to say, you know, this top is pretty good for being a non-10 top. You know, 10 top is what everybody wants on the PRS. That's their best tops that they've got. So a regular one is 4,600 bucks, but to get a 10 top, it's about a $1,400 premium at 5930 But here's what the back looks like. No control access. I'm sure they just uh, wired it up through the larger than normal F-holes right there. So hey, in a roundabout way, I did get the Dweezil Zappa F-hold one. Just, just not quite the same. <laughs> oh, just to follow up on that story, I, I offered him $10,000 and he declined. And there was a limited edition run of about 50 or so. So you can buy those outside of just his signature one. But anyways, two-piece flame maple back, output jack on the side, regular strap buttons in your normal locations. And really take some time to appreciate the, uh, the natural wood binding. You know, honestly, I'm not sure if I like it. Sometimes I'm a fan of that natural fake wooden binding thing that they've got going on, but... I don't know if it jives with the colors on this one or not. Kind of reminds me of like ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise. <laughs> I can't look at this guitar the same anymore. I think I ruined it for me. <laughs> this is the sandwich burst. All I can see now is like McDonald's. But anyways, here's our ketchup neck that is made of mahogany. And again, you do have the binding, real binding, along the neck. And then back here we have our vintage style tuners and this is an early 2021 model. But all said and done, this weighs five pounds, 8.3 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. run through these tones here starting with all cleans just the neck position roll the tone down a bit
I like it. I, I want to try to avoid using the typical words you use, like bell-like, but it does have a little bit something else to it there. Super jazzy. And don't forget, you can also coil split that. Quite a different sound for leads. I think I like it in humbucking mode the best. Let's switch over to the bridge position now. those in the middle. Just your bridge split. Just the neck split. both split. Very nice sounding clean guitar, I'll give it that. Try some distortion.
thing that this whole chambered out body's got going for it. If you play a harmonic with a little bit of distortion, it'll just literally, I'm talking literally, ring forever. Some of that is just, you know, how it's built, it sustains. A lot of it's kind of the feedback, but controlled feedback. So listen to this. I'll just go on until you stop it. I mean, I just had that running for a couple of minutes. That's not like a sustainer pedal or anything either. It's just, just kind of how it is. And here's how it sounds like unplugged. Now that we know all about the PRS McCarty 594 Hollow Body 2, what are my final thoughts on this thing? A very well-crafted instrument. I could not find any like QC type things going on with this. It's a beautiful guitar, sounds great, plays great. So I think if you are attracted to this, go for it. For me, it's still missing that just one small thing that makes me like super bond with it. But at the same time, you know, PRS are players guitars. I'm not quite there in that territory yet. There's definitely a lot of tones to coax out of this. And I think that whole vibrating low E string kind of sustainer like with some notes being played over it. I could see how this would be a very instrumental piece to just, you know, bring in something out different. I mean, I kind of got jazzy vibes out of this. It's great for that. But at the same time, it still kind of looks like a regular electric guitar. You just get the F holes and whatnot. Very comfortable. I like that the back kind of bows out a bit because you know, it just, it, it feels right. It's not giant like a lot of the arch top hollow bodies are. It's still familiar, but just a little bit larger than normal. The neck profile, I would say it's similar to what you find on like a 50s Les Paul standard. Now we're talking the new ones, not like the vintage, vintage ones. It's kind of like that 59 shape. That's what I would call it. Definitely nice and rounded C neck profile. I enjoyed it. For me, it was all about the humbucker tones. I didn't get much out of the coil splits. I was kind of scared this might be neck heavy, but at least on the strap that I was using, granted it was a pretty gripping strap, I did not notice any of that. It just kind of wanted to sit in natural playing position. But it was definitely fun to get to check this out. So troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.